I talk about and review a lot of really expensive phones on my channel, so sometimes it's nice to talk about more budget devices, things that you know actual people can afford rather than a thousand pound iPhone 10s. And that's why I'm looking at the new EE Hawk, a super fast and super cheap, according to EE, budget smartphone. So I've been using the Hawk for the past few days to find out if it's actually any good. Although there are a couple of things I should mention up front. First of all, it is locked to EE, and second of all, it is only coming to the UK, which is kind of unfortunate because I'm actually really enjoying using it. So there's three main reasons you may want to consider the Hawk. Firstly, the price, as I say, it's 150 quid, which means it's a pretty cheap budget phone. Puts it against the likes of the Moto E4 or for a ten or more, the Moto G5, which we'll talk about later on. Also, EE claim it's super fast. And while I wouldn't necessarily say it's super fast, it is actually surprisingly slick and responsive considering the specs. And number three, it supports EE's fast 4G plus network with Cat6 support. So what that means is theoretically, you can get up to 300 megabit per second download on this phone. Now I'm in rural Somerset, but I've got 4G, so let's run a quick speed test. 45 megabits per second down, pretty good. But right off the bat, the biggest issue I have with these branded phones is bloatware. But to tell you the truth, it's not too bad on the Hawk. There's only about three apps, as far as I can see, that are actually pre-installed. It's not too bad at all. You've got like My EE, Lookout Antivirus. That's about it, except for the uh, branding EE on the back. It's not actually that much of a horrible branded phone as you might expect, except for these couple of extra apps, which you can just quickly remove from the home screen. In terms of design, it's actually quite a bit more premium, I'd say, than the £150 price tag would suggest. The whole thing is glass, it's made of Gorilla Glass, except for the camera module on the back and also the rear fingerprint reader, which works really well. The bezels are fairly chunky, but that's kind of the par for the course at this price range. On the whole, I've got to say, it's actually a really nice looking phone. It feels great in the hand and really, really light as well. I thought the battery wasn't in it or something. It's surprisingly light. Although because it is all glass, it's a little bit slippery and also it's a massive smudge magnet. So you're going to want to keep a uh, cloth with you at all times to uh, get rid of that. But I can't really criticize it. You've got stereo speakers on the bottom, the latest USB-C. Just because this is a cheap phone, it's not relegated to last gen micro USB. And also headphone jack. Good stuff. The five inch screen is nice. It's not the most vibrant or contrasty. The colors look just a little bit washed out compared to some other phones. But the 720p resolution I'd say is just about right for this five inch screen. And that also helps improve the battery life. Performance is actually surprisingly good. It's running some random MediaTek processor along with two gigs of RAM, but that combined with Android 7.1, it actually feels fairly responsive. I have to say, I don't have any criticisms with the speed or the uh, responsiveness at all. It is surprisingly fast. Maybe not super fast, like EE claim, but I'd say surprisingly fast. That'll do. <laughs> My one gripe is storage. You only get 16 gigs built in, which feels very 2015. But the good news is it does support micro SD cards, so you can just slot one of those in next to the micro SIM card and then expand your storage that way. Battery life is fine. It's not bad, it's not great. The 2500 milliamp hour cell in this is comparatively a little bit small for the five inch size, but it does a decent job. And I think that lower 720p resolution helps with that. EE claim you'll get about 10 hours from my experience of the last few days. That seems about right. Pretty much a full day out of it, but you'll be looking at 10 to 15% of battery by 10 o'clock at night with normal use. So it's definitely an overnight charge. It's not a day and a half phone, but it will see you through the day. And since I think most of us do charge our phones overnight anyway, as long as it gets you through the day, then it's not really a problem. When it comes to budget phones, it's usually the camera that suffers the most. And the Hawk isn't really an exception here. It's a decent 13 megapixel camera on the back with an eight megapixel selfie camera up front. And you know what? It's absolutely fine in good light. Although compared to higher end competition, obviously it doesn't really compete. But then again, we always have to come back to that price, 150 pounds. And so I think for that sort of money, this is absolutely fine. It's bright, the colors are reasonably vivid. It doesn't have the best dynamic range or the most detail compared to some other phones, but you know what, it's a decent camera. Although I'm a bit put off by the beauty mode that's on by default at the front. It makes me look like I've just got like a face of foundation or something. I've just like, I've never looked so smooth in my entire life, but you can turn that off. So the EE Hawk, should you buy it? 
Well, for the price, 150 pounds or 15 quid a month over two years on contract, I think it's actually a really good option. But the problem is, it's not a loan in this price bracket. The likes of, as I say, the Moto E4 and G5 are very similar in terms of price. And I think the G5 is a better bet. It's usually about, the G5 is usually 10 or 15 pounds more than this, looking at about 160, 165, but actually you can find it for quite a bit less at the moment on Amazon. So considering that has a bigger battery, a more powerful Snapdragon 430 processor, and also a high resolution full HD screen for possibly less money if you can find it uh, discounted, and it's also available worldwide and not locked at EE, that does sound like a better deal to me. So the competition like the G5 is probably a better bet, but this is a solid alternative, I have to say. And if you're in the UK and you're happy to have EE as your mobile operator, I would recommend this phone. It's not the best on the market, but for the price, and perhaps if you don't want the G5, for example, or this is cheaper where you are, then I would definitely recommend it. So that's the EE Hawk, possibly the best named phone ever. <laughs> Let me know what you make of it in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to click that like and subscribe button down there. Help me get to 200k subscribers. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.